Hello everyone. Thank you for watching Edupedia World videos. We have started covering SAP Finance and Controlling Overview, within which we have already covered the two topics, Finance Integration Concept and General Ledger Accounting. We will now look into Accounts Payable. Accounts Payable, they record the payable transactions which are related to the vendor, either internal or external. Let's discuss the purchase to pay process first to understand the financial impact. There will always be a purchase requisition which is created on the basis of which a purchase order is created by the procurement team in the organization. Once a purchase order is created and you have received the goods, then the goods received takes place in the system. Once the goods are received from the vendor, then there will be an invoice verification process where an invoice is sent and it is recorded in the system either automatically or manually by the organization. And once this invoice has been processed in the system, the last stage will be the payment which you have to make to the vendor. On the SAP MM side, you will see concepts like material number, vendor number, purchase order number, etc. are very important. But when these move to finance, the GL account, the reconciliation account of the particular vendor becomes very important because that is what is used at the invoice stage. Also, if there are any taxes, then the tax GL account is triggered at the invoicing stage. And lastly, at the invoice payment stage, again, your invoice reconciliation account is set off against the money which you have paid to the vendor, which means against your bank account. We will look into such examples going forward. So, what are the inputs in an AP transaction? For accounts payable, there is always a purchases which is recorded from MM and there is an invoicing which is done in FI. These are the inputs for accounts payable. And then the outputs are a lot and mainly they are related to payments. For example, an output will be an outgoing payment. That means that uh, you will be making an outgoing payment to the vendor, whether it is by check, whether it is by online payment, whether it is an auto payment from your bank, etc. The other output will be an account list. This gives you a summary of a particular vendor's account, whether what items are pending to be paid by you etc. You will also find things like proposal list and payment list which we will look into detail when we discuss payments in going forward. You can also have a summary of all the down payments which you have already made to the vendor in the past. And you finally you will see the open items. Open items are nothing but those accounts which are not yet paid which means if a vendor has sent you a goods worth $100 and you have made a payment only of 50, then $50 will be a pending open item. And that will always be shown in red in your account balances. We will look into this in the forthcoming slides. So what does the vendor posting look like and what are the primary data which are used for accounts payable? The primary transaction data for accounts payable are the vendor invoice capturing, that is when the invoice is posted in the system, whether it is automatically or it is done manually by someone. And the next one is vendor payments. These are the two primary transactions which take place in accounting for vendors. Again, the payments can be auto payments, which are done on a daily or a monthly or a weekly basis, or these can be manual payments done by 
the finance team in your organization. A vendor invoice can be created manually through AP in FI or it can be automatically created through the MM module via invoice verification. There is an, another module called vendor invoice management which is also provided by SAP which helps you automatically post invoices through MM in FI. On the right side of the screen you will see what are the different options which you get under accounts payable. When you want to enter a document, you use FB60 to enter an invoice. You can create credit memos, which are basically reversals. And you can park your documents, you can see your down payments, you can make down payments, and you can make payments, which is over here under outgoing payment. We will look into these in detail when we look into accounts payable as a big topic in the future. The next slide covers invoice verification. Invoice verification is basically a three-way matching process. It looks at the purchase order and the purchase order will cover things like the material number, the material description, the quantity of goods that you have ordered from the vendor. Then it takes into consideration the goods received. So what are the goods that you finally received from the vendor? There is a possibility that you may have ordered 100 units of a product, but you received only 80 units. And that becomes important at this stage. Since you have received only 80 units, the invoice will also be accordingly for those units only. If there is a mismatch for these items, then you need to contact the vendor and the invoice needs to be resent by the vendor. So this kind of three-way matching is called invoice verification. And finally, after this verification is done, there will be a payment which can again be automatic or manual. So we discussed open items very briefly earlier and this screenshot will provide more information on that. So as you see, there are items which are marked in red on the top and there are some in green on the bottom. What we are currently looking at is an example vendor and the vendor name and what are the items which are still to be paid. So you see the ones in red are overdue, which means these are still to be paid and they have not been cleared yet. That's the reason they have not been cleared. Whereas on the other hand, you see on the bottom of the screen, there are these green items where you see that an open item of 50 was paid 50, which is why you see a 50 positive and a 50 negative. And this means that the payment is made and the item is cleared, which is why it shows under green. There are many other points in this screenshot which are very important. Firstly, you have the document number. As you see, the document numbers starting with 8 in this case are the invoices. So you see this example where 8 ending with 130 is an invoice of 50. And this has been paid by a document of again 50. But this time the document number starts with 1. You see over here in the example it says 1 ending with 142. So this is just an example to show you that document numbers also have their unique number ranges. And we will look into this, how the number ranges are created, etc. going forward. Also, if you notice, there is something called document type, which is KR for all the invoices, whereas it is AB for the payment documents. This means that the payment documents are a different document type. And we will again discuss what exactly are document types and how we differentiate them later on. And also you see there is this red arrow which is marked for the top five items. This means that the item has crossed the due date and this is a warning for the finance department 
that they should make these payments as soon as possible. So that's all for now. We've covered accounts payable and let's cover accounts receivable in the next video. Thank you very much for watching Edupedia World Videos.